WWE Survivor Series is one of the most anticipated premium live events in a while, for a couple simple reasons. Randy Orton is officially coming back to WWE, and there is a potential CM Punk return. We're coping. We're coping hard. Before we make our Survivor Series predictions, of course, make sure to click that like button, subscribe if you already didn't, if you want these cow cow jumbo gains. Let's get this CM Punk stuff out of the way. That's where I want to start. I want to start with CM Punk. Now, look, people, I want CM Punk to come back to the WWE. It would be a great moment. I'm all for it. It's a great business decision. He sells merchandise. You get the idea. But honestly, as of lately, I'm not feeling it anymore. I don't think he's coming back. Which is weird because we did get these references. And if you're telling me, well, these were just coincidences, I'm not buying it. Watch this video and you'll understand. Even if by some miracle these were unintentional, how do you explain this? USA Network uh, teasing CM Punk. It was intentional. The question is, why WWE and CM Punk are trolling us? Make sure to watch this video to get a better idea. Okay, I'll give you some optimism. Don't get your hopes up. Don't blame me when he's not showing up. But again, Shinsuke Nakamura said, I know you're near. A uh, Survivor Series is happening in Chicago. Do you know by any chance where CM Punk is from? So Shinsuke is calling out someone and we have this GM storyline and we don't really know what it's all about. Maybe they're trying to get CM Punk and they're arguing which one of these guys is getting CM Punk. It's a big reach, I understand, but it's a possibility. If it's ends up happening, I wanna be right. The problem is Shinsuke is not actually advertised for Survivor Series, which obviously doesn't give you the answer right away. He could, you know, come out and say, I'm challenging anyone or ex ex exactly you, the one I'm calling out to a match, I know you're here or something along those lines. That could happen, but again, don't get your hopes up. I'm just not getting that feeling anymore. With Randy Orton being announced, it could mean two things. WWE don't want to get your hopes up. You know, they basically revealed it's Randy who's coming back, which is great. I'm, I mean, Orton Mark, you know, my, my favorite wrestler. Or it could also mean that WWE are trolling you. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, it does look like a big paper. If CM Punk doesn't show up, I know we'll get some disappointment. Well, it doesn't mean he's not showing up at rumble or whatever or maybe you don't even care so let's make our predictions carlito versus santos escobar so this is not necessarily the money match it's not santos escobar versus rey mysterio but carlito is the one who kind of made santos escobar turn fully heal he revealed that santos escobar was the one who gave logan paul the you know knuckles boom boom the metal thing how do you call them brass knuckles and that's pretty much the rivalry i am very impressed by santos escobar i told you that in my previous video i love his facial expressions i think he's a good promo i'm honestly very impressed i didn't see a lot of him in nxt so i think he's a tremendous heel when he turned on Rey mysterio you could actually believe that he's hurt by what he just did. I'm gonna make that comparison again. He's like Andrade with microphone skills. I think this is an obvious one. Santos Escobar is winning. I love Carlito, but I mean, why would he win? Women's War Games. Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, and Shotzi versus Bailey, Io Sky, Kairi Sane, and Asuka. The rivalry was alright. I kind of feel like a lot of the time it was one of the lowest things about SmackDown, unfortunately, because... I felt like we've been watching the same thing over and over and over again. Obviously, until we got Kyrie Sane back and Asuka joined Damage Control. That's where it picked up. So here's my problem with War Games matches. First of all, I'm really disappointed we're not getting traditional Survivor Series tag team matches anymore. Come on. That's so lame. This is a tradition. It's in the name. Like, that's what I like about Survivor Series. Smackdown vs. Raw. If it's not Smackdown vs. Raw, I still want that. I like elimination type matches. Come on. It's, it's so dumb. I know I'm in the minority right here. I get it. War Games is fun. I always love traditional Survivor Series matches though. Another problem with matches like these is that there are no stakes. Like, what's gonna happen? Either of these teams could win and nothing changes unless we get some 
some twists and turns during or after the match. And when it comes to this match, I feel like damage control need to and should and will win this match, that's my prediction. I mean, the faction just got bigger and stronger, you need to capitalize on that, but I really hope we're getting some kind of a twist. Unless it's a really, really good match, then it doesn't really matter that much, right? The Intercontinental Championship match, Gunter versus The Miz. I absolutely love this rivalry, one of the greatest Intercontinental Champions of all time versus probably the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time. I like Babyface The Miz because just like I've said in many, many videos already, but I'm gonna say it again, he's a Babyface, but he's still The Miz. He's going to kick you in the nuts. That's what bad people do, and The Miz. Finally, he's living up to his name. He does have massive balls now. And when was the last time people took The Miz so seriously? Awesome back-to-back -back rivalries, Miz versus LA Knight, Miz versus Gunter. I'm happy where this is going. People start accusing Triple H of not liking The Miz, which I don't believe is true. So obviously my prediction is Gunter, he's definitely retaining the championship. All that matters is how tough The Miz is going to look in this match. And I really hope this is one of the matches where people after the match are going to talk about how great The Miz actually is and that's another prediction. I believe this is going to be an absolute banger and The Miz is going to earn even more respect from WWE fans. Ray Ripley versus Zoe Stark. So Zoe Stark is someone that I didn't really care about when she was with Trish Stratus. I believe the rivalry started to suck, you know. But now, after seeing some of her matches, her moveset, I feel like she's pretty good and she is that type of a wrestler you would you know typically would like to see go one-on-one -on -one against Rhea Ripley two strong women but that being said Rhea is obviously retaining but I believe Zoe has nothing to lose here finally men's war games match Sami Zayn Seth Rollins Randy Orton Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso versus Dominic Finn Damien JD and Drew McIntyre here's one thing I would change about war games and I know all of you are going to disagree, I would make it into an elimination match. I know it's kind of like an elimination chamber and maybe that's why it's not an elimination match, but I don't know. I guess this way I would still get my traditional Survivor Series type of match. Of course, first of all, Randy coming back, that's great. I'm disappointed that they announced it and we didn't get to see Randy, so no surprise return anymore after two years, I believe. It's been two years since I saw Randy. Wow, that's disappointing. But again, Randy is coming back. I absolutely love it. I've heard some theories. People saying Randy gets attacked before the match. CM Punk replaces him. Now, come, 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 come on. We're, we're talking about Randy Orton right here. We're not talking about Ivar. I don't know. Okay, look. Any of these men could get attacked technically and it wouldn't ruin their credibility, it doesn't matter, they're on television anyway. Randy came back after two years, you, you can't do that. No wait, I believe it's been a year since Randy Orton got injured, but you know, when Randy is gone, time stands still. If Punk is coming back, it could be against Shinsuke, this match doesn't necessarily need to feature CM Punk, or it could happen after the match, I don't care at this point, I'm, I've made a deal with my expectations already. Anyway, the build was, it was fine, but people, I, I'm, I'm sure most of you will agree, we did get tired of the same main event on Raw, right? Like, we, we, come on, Judgment Day, Cody, Seth, Sammy, Promo, da, 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 da. Dominic wants to pay and we see Dominic, we're a little, that's a lot. The good thing is, this is war game, so I hope, I do believe, and I hope this is the conclusion of this rivalry. So my prediction is actually going to be the babyface team because Randy is coming back, but in this scenario, it doesn't really matter that much. I don't think so. And uh, I think Randy could turn on Jay. Jay is very, very concerned for obvious reasons. So I feel like Randy could turn on Jay. Does that necessarily mean he's turning heel? Not really. It could also happen after the match. Is Damien going to cash in? That's another possibility. Maybe WWE will end up doing something shocking and CM Punk not returning is not gonna be the only conversation people are going to be having after the show. So that's another possibility. Do I have to make a prediction? No, he, he's not cashing in. That's my prediction. Is Randy turning heel? 
I'm gonna say maybe, but I believe there will be something happening in the ring with Jay and Randy Orton. Something physical is going to happen. So these are my predictions. I don't know, I'm excited about the pay-per-view, but like I've said, I'm trying to be reasonable. I feel like we set our expectations a bit too high. So thank you for watching this video. Like, subscribe if you already did. And the great one, peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure.